Breakaway, Corey Perry. A drop pass, they score! Cole Caulfield! The Montreal Canadiens will have a chance to advance to the Stanley Cup Final. Bailey over for the Islanders. Now off a giveaway, score! Anthony Bavillier sends the Islanders down to Tampa for Game 7 on Friday night. What a game six at the Coliseum. Hi, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Our Line Starts, fueled by Duncan with Patrick Sharp and Anson Carter. I'm Catherine Tappan. Ace, are we bugging you right now? You just should we I'm, interrupt check, I'm getting up to date on Coach Hackstall. We now interrupt too, Anson's so. cell phone just, conversation for another know, edition of Our Line Starts. <laughs> midway through this taping. Nice. Well, let's talk about this game, you guys. The New York Islanders forcing a Game 7 back in Tampa. That'll be on Friday night, and it was an incredible Game 6 at Nassau Coliseum. Had the opportunity to be there. It was a pretty cool scene, guys. And uh, You made it out of there alive. I, I made it out of there alive, believe it. I did not Where get hit in the head with a beer can. That's what I want to know. Sharpie, myself. I mean, okay, you were working, so you couldn't yeah. go, but I was totally available. Where was my invite? My phone was still I, working. Sometimes I need a night away from you guys as <laughs> okay, much as I love you to okay. death. But, uh, but what did you guys think of that game? I mean, Sharpie, you broadcasted the game. What did you think about it? I thought the Islanders were in trouble midway yeah. through the game. 2 nothing. It was all Tampa Bay. Didn't like Kucherov leaving early on in the game, too. That was a bit of a concern. I was waiting for him to return. At some point, he did not, and it clearly affected the Tampa Bay Lightning. Great job from the Islanders. As soon as Everly scored that first goal, it was a different game. You could feel the momentum kind of shift a little bit. It was the physical pounding that the Islanders put on the Tampa Bay Lightning again, much like they did the previous series against Boston. They attacked some key players, and it paid off as that game went along. And if anyone had to score for New York Islanders, it had to be Eberle, because yeah. he's been non-existent. Mm -hmm. You haven't been able to find him. Playing with Matt Barzell, that's hard to say, playing with the best player of the New York Islanders in terms of making plays with the puck. Eberle couldn't be found. That backhand, it was sneaky. He had a lot of juice on it. I was very impressed by that. But cross-checking. Yeah. I mean, cross-checking is like... Open season now, and guys, you saw what happened to Barzell before yeah. in his cross check. You saw previously in the playoffs, it's been going on time and time again. You're right, Sharpie. Not having Kucherov, that was a big miss for the Tampa Bay Lightning because their power play. Palat, as much as I like him as a hockey player, it isn't the same as having Kucherov on the flank there because he's so deceptive. He could shoot the puck and pass the puck off the one timer as well as anyone, if not the best in the national. Yeah, they won game. the cup last year without Stamkos basically for the entire playoffs. He played like two minutes in the final, scored an awesome goal. If they're trying to try to do it again without Kucherov, it's a very different team. Kucherov makes all those plays. And I'm with you on the cross-checks. It's always been a part of playoff hockey. But I think ever since they took away the slash, right, you saw some guys breaking their fingers, their hands, their wrists. Uh, they started calling that penalty a lot more. Everybody just went to the cross-check. And you can get some serious meat on those cross-checks, right? That's where all the strength is. That was uh, right in the ribs, lower back area. Who knows what the injury is. But if he doesn't play in Game 7, that's going to be a huge turning point. Yeah, that is, and when you look at this Game 7 now back in Tampa, obviously the momentum is on the Islanders' side, I guess you could say, following that Game 6 thrilling win. But it's on home ice for Tampa. And if Nikita Kucherov is not available in Game 7, uh, that's going to be a big concern for the Lightning. But what do you guys think about Game 7? Ace, I'll ask you. I mean, in Game 7, it's all all on the table on that one. It really is. It doesn't matter the best team. It's the best team that night. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they beat the Islanders without Kucherov. Mm -hmm. I think he's that big of a deal. It makes that team that much better. You know, Stamkos, we mentioned, they could have won the Cup without Steven Stamkos. They still can't now. But you don't win a Stanley Cup this year with the way the Tampa Bay Lightning are built right now without Nikita Kucherov. So that is the first thing I'm looking at. If he's in the lineup, then they have a chance. But if, they're in, if he's not in the lineup, I don't think they win, KT. And it's a key player on the top line that's going to be out Kucherov if he doesn't play. So who do you replace him with? If he, We saw Sorelli play the bulk of the minutes there. Uh, in last night's game, but now you're affecting that second line, Kalorn, Sorelli, and Stamkos. So I don't know what they're going to do in Game 7, Tampa Bay, but they're at home, and Vasilevsky, if his numbers show us anything after a loss, he bounces back. So I would be confident with him in the net, but it is a Game 7. It's a toss-up. I would say it's 50-50 right down yeah. the middle. I will say, when you do get to go to the games, it's pretty neat to see everybody in person. The Vasilevsky, I mean, in net, it's in, it's he's huge. <laughs> he takes up so much space that it's amazing. I heard you in the broadcast talk about how that one goal was scored, and it was a tiny little little puck size location yeah. that they were able to beat Vasilevsky. Yeah, there wasn't much room there, and it was Scott Mayfield, the guy yeah. that put Kucherov out of the game, ends up scoring a big-time goal for the Islanders. A pretty key player in the game last night. I have a question for you, though. Were you throwing beers on <laughs> <it>? <laughs> Yes, I was right in the middle of it, throwing them on the... Yeah, she Eddie O was, was yelling at people back, like me. Maybe. Yeah. No, yeah, she was throwing them back. It was fun, I have to say. We'll, uh, we'll see if they get more games at Nassau Coliseum. It could have been the final game ever at yeah. Nassau, which I know those fans will be very sad about. To your point, quickly, too, KT, I think that's why more people should actually go to a game. Yes. So you could appreciate the skill level of the players that we have in the National Hockey League. You mentioned how big Vasilevsky is. 
But he plays the game like he's five foot nine, five foot ten. You wouldn't think he's as big as he is with those cat-like reflexes. So right. you definitely gain more of appreciation for the athleticism of these guys if you go and see them in person. Yeah, and I've certainly seen him in person before. It was just a, I was reminded when I saw him last night. It had been a couple years, and uh, he makes it tough in that net. So let's uh, let's take a, since we're talking about the Lightning and the Islanders, let's take a look at the odds powered by Points Bet Sportsbook, the odds to win the Stanley Cup, and you see the Lightning at plus 150, and the Islanders now at plus 350. Uh, what do you think of these numbers, Ace? Huh. Interesting numbers, but I still like the Tampa Lightning. Yeah. I still think from top to bottom, they're the better team. I just don't know if Game 7, not having Kucherov, that's the big if for me mm -hmm. when I look at this, because they're playing at home, so you think the odds are in their favor against a scrappy New York Islanders hockey club. He's got to be a game-time decision. We'll have to wait and see uh, in warm-ups tomorrow night, but we've got a big game tonight as well as we're sitting on the set getting ready for Vegas and Montreal, a chance for the Habs to close out the series at the Bell Center. Fans outside, it's electric. It is uh, an incredible atmosphere up there. It's a shame that all of them can't go inside for the game, but I know all those restaurants are packed at the best capacity they can do. Who wins this game tonight? What are your predictions? It's been an interesting series. I've been dead wrong with this series, <laughs> so I might as well try to make another mistake. I thought Vegas was going to wrap this thing up in four or five games, to be honest with you. At the start of the series, I thought Vegas was bigger, stronger. I didn't see Montreal getting out of the D zone a whole lot, and boy, was I wrong. It's Starting from the back, coming out, Carey Price, the four defensemen that we always talk about, they're killing plays in the D zone, and the forward group of Montreal is speedy. They look faster than Vegas, and they're giving them all kinds of problems. How many breakaways, odd man rushes? We saw two on O in overtime. Do you have to give up if you're Vegas before you start correcting something? Something's going on with Vegas. I don't see a confident group offensively. Their backs are against the wall now. I'd like to see the four lines get back intact as they were in the regular season in the majority of the playoffs. I'd start Robin Leonard, and I'd say have at it, boys. I would also get Ryan Reeves back in there, too. You're talking about four lines. I know he doesn't bring anything offensively. He doesn't want anything to do with the puck at all. But just the fact that he has a presence on the forecheck and the physicality, you talk to a lot of guys in the league, they're saying, hey, Ryan Reeves on the ice, I'm not going back for that puck, or I'm thinking twice about it. And with all the minutes, the heavy minutes, the big four for the Montreal Canadiens play. If you have someone in there every now and then softening those guys up, wearing them down, so if you're going to play those minutes, even if you're not going to score a goal against them, you get a guy punishing them, that could pay dividends later on in the hockey game. So I like Montreal's young guys up front. Everyone talks about their older players and how much savvy they're bringing to the table, but it's all about Cole Caulfield and Kat Kanyemi and Nick Suzuki. Now, that Montreal Canadiens team, they're a good team during the regular season, even though they're missing Gallagher. They're missing Carey Price for a lot of the regular season. They're missing Shea Weber. Mm -hmm. But those young guys have brought in a certain level of swag to the table. I mean, Cole Caulfield, he's taken it to a whole different level. Now they expect to score, whereas they thought they could beat you 1-0. Not anymore. With Suzuki and Caulfield, that's that pairing that we'll talk about for the next probably 10 years yeah. in Montreal with Tyler Toffoli. I like those young guys up front. I really do. Suzuki, the playmaker. Caulfield, the goal scorer. I like that veteran line. Stahl and Perry, they're doing what they can out there. They're making plays. They play a simple, effective game. It's a nice mixture a nice balance of youth and veteran players on that group. I did not see Montreal getting to this point one game away from the Stanley Cup final. I almost want to see them pull it off and get there just to see the city of Montreal go crazy. It's a holiday up there yep. uh, today, so they're all <laughs> excited holiday, for yes. the game. It should be a pretty cool atmosphere in the city and in the rink. Yeah, so what is it, you guys, about this Montreal team? Because you mentioned it. You thought four-game sweep, five games mm -hmm. maybe for Vegas. And we've been watching them clip off, you know, Toronto Maple Leafs, and then it's the Winnipeg Jets, and now they got a chance to knock off Vegas for a trip to the Stanley Cup final. Like, what is it with this group? I know you hear the players talk about about how confident they are and they've gelled together but there's got to be something else right um, yeah I go, go back to the start of the playoffs I didn't like their first four games mm -hmm. against Toronto they were awful they were throwing the puck around blind passes to the middle of the ice they didn't really look like they had a purpose out there and they found themselves down 3-1 in the series all of a sudden their backs were against the wall they went into this defensive shell almost and forced Toronto to make plays sounds familiar right they did it to Winnipeg mm -hmm. now they're doing it to Vegas and when they're Killing those plays defensively and you're asking a team to come down the ice and make plays and pick you apart, it's not happening. As soon as those pucks turn over, it's gone the other way, and that's where the speed of the forwards can cash in. Scoring first has been huge for Montreal. Uh, we'll see if they can do it again today. And you're seeing the confidence rise in this group, too. Yeah. And it goes to scoring sh goals shorthanded. You know, these guys think, oh, we're down a man? No big deal. You turn that puck over, you're going to try to jam it down your throat. And that's exactly the mentality they're taking for the full 60 minutes. And 5-5, five and five too. It's the same approach, game in and game out. But like I said, it keeps going back to those young players. And now they believe. They believe now. They've knocked off Toronto, mm -hmm. who everyone's talked about, Toronto Maple Leafs. They weren't that good. Winnipeg Jets, I thought they were a good team, but losing Mark Shifley, that gave Montreal huge, huge advantage. Yeah. And now they're in the semifinals. Now, now they believe. Yeah. Now they're thinking, geez, anything's possible. I'm like you, Sharpie. I didn't expect 
the Vegas Golden Knights to be down this series. I thought maybe four, maybe five games. But I'm seeing Mark Stone, and I'm now calling him Mark Stone Hands. <laughs> and I never even thought I would say that about Mark cold, Stone. Man. I mean, cold. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I saw you talking before, Sharpie. I thought you were ripping before, but you're, you're throwing daggers around, I think, in last night's pregame show or whatever it was. And I never thought I'd ever say that about Mark Stone. Like, Mark Stone was one of the best players in the National Hockey He's a star. He's not a superstar, though. Superstars are guys that make players around him better at all times, regardless of the score. And Mark Stone isn't that guy. He has nice chemistry with Pacioretty and Chandler Stevenson. But if he doesn't get going, Vegas has no chance. Like, you could talk about Vegas' depth all you want up and down the lineup. It's great. Need other guys to score. But, Sharp, you play those cup-winning teams. If your big guys like yourself and Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves don't show up, you guys aren't winning. Yeah, those I don't are care the guys. How good the, the depth guys are. Those were the guys. Kane and Taves, every big game, five, six, and seven, they showed up and they cashed in. It's fine to play good and outplay the line you're going against, but you got to get on the score sheet. And for Mark Stone, he's got zeros in the series, in the semifinals. That's not good enough. And the fact that He's a great player away from the puck. He makes a lot of plays defensively. He, he loses those little short two-foot passes to keep the play alive. Seems like he's turning the puck over a lot in key situations, taking some minuses. Uh, it's been a big difference in this series. So if he can get on the score sheet tonight, be one of the best players for Vegas, I think they got a chance to win. Just remembered, he called uh, <laughs> Corey Perry, old yeller. old yeller. That's what it was. Just came back to there me. There you go. Old <laughs> yeller. <laughs> Leave it to Ace. He'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, there was some news announced today in the NHL, guys, and it's the Seattle Kraken. They hired Dave Hextall as their first ever uh, head coach. He last coached for the Philadelphia Flyers for three seasons from 2015 to 19 and then the past two years he was an assistant with the Toronto Maple Leafs so uh, an interesting hire because we were talking before we got on for the podcast that you know his name wasn't really being thrown around for the Seattle crack and we heard a lot of big names being tossed down a lot of big names are up right now with John Tortorella of course everyone's looking where he's going to go Rick Tockett yeah. but it's Dave Haxtell now taking over the new franchise in Seattle why is he a good fit Sharpie that's a good question I don't know the answer to that it caught me by surprise I was expecting some of those other names to land the job as well at least that's what the rumblings were around the league it does a tells you a lot about the organization that they can keep a secret this seems like it was in the works for a number of weeks they Can't had crack that code <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. Very good. laughs> put that on the highlight yeah, okay, say exactly. Seattle cracking jokes <laughs> <with them. laughs> but it looks like he's getting a second chance did a pretty good job with Philly his record was was decent they got rid of him maybe a little bit too early he was an assistant coach with Toronto he's probably learned a lot over the years and excited to get the program started in Seattle we'll see how he does coaches definitely are better the second time around learning from those previous experiences and he had a lot of success at NODAC. North Dakota was always a championship level team. He developed a lot of good NHL players there at that program. This will be his opportunity now to take those lessons he learned from Philadelphia and even as assistant in Toronto and apply it to Seattle where there's going to be some pressure because mm -hmm. everyone's expecting Stanley yeah. Cup playoffs <laughs> based on what Vegas did in their first year. Well, that leads me to our cold brew check fueled by Duncan and is it realistic to think that the Kraken will have the same success as the NHL's last expansion team you mentioned Las Vegas uh, who's made the playoffs each of their first four seasons. What do you think Sharpie? That's a lot to ask. Going to the Stanley Cup final in year one I'm not sure if that's uh, in the cards for Seattle if it is that's great but they're going to get a good player off every team an NHL roster player and these guys that get selected to go to Seattle they're going to have a chip on their shoulder because their team didn't protect them I think they'll be good I don't know if Stanley Cup final though. I'm going to give you my answer with the amount of time it takes me to eat one of those Dunkin Donuts <laughs> and I'm going to say no I put down those donuts pretty quickly <laughs> Vegas was unbelievable I know this is cold brew time but I'm a donut guy I'm a food guy myself personally. we know that so I would say no the bar is way too high just put a good team on the ice and then just go from there all right, that was the cold brew check fueled by Duncan this season. Be sure to grab a cold brew for game time because where there's hockey, there's Duncan. And we got a show to do, guys, so let's wrap up that podcast. Let's go. Let's Good to it. be with you guys. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Our Line Stars fueled by Duncan. We'll see you next time.